Hi, I'm Nikki, the obsessive bookseller. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'd like to review the Interdependency Trilogy by John Stalzi. For me, this author is a pretty feel-good sci-fi writer. Every time I read his books, I'm just delighted because he's really funny, he's lighthearted, he's fast-paced, it's just, yeah, good stuff. Overall, a go-to author when I need a refresh between uh, some denser series. In an unusual turn of events, I actually read all three books within a relatively short time frame, like within a couple of months of each other. Now, it does help matters that they're incredibly short, but still, that's the kind of turnaround I've been talking about achieving more often in my reading life, so very happy with this. I'm going to give you a non-spoiler review of the first three books and then give you an overall impression. So, Collapsing Empire, I went into this with really high expectations. I'm a big fan of his first Old Man's War book, absolutely love that one, so this one already had a lot of high expectations for it because of that. And I really love the Kaiji Preservation Society, I read that earlier in the year. And a lot of people, when I was talking about Kaiju, said, have you read Interdependency yet? It's my favorite of the series. So many people said that. So. There is a chance that my rating was skewed by high expectations, but I think even had I not heard anything about it, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed this one quite as much as Old Man's War. And I think it comes down to the characters. I did not like the character profiles in this one as much. There's one character in particular who felt incredibly unrealistic and overdone. Uh, she dropped F-bombs, like every other word in her sentences, and to the point where it didn't really add emphasis anymore. It just was kind of distracting from the plot. And I've discovered about myself that I love profanity in books, but I'm a bit of a profanity snob. So if you're gonna swear, like placement is everything. It can't just be in there senselessly. It has to work to enhance the character, emphasize the dialogue, add humor. And in this case, it just felt very unartfully done. I didn't totally hate the character because of that. I, I found her no BS attitude really compelling, and I liked that she was kind of a catalyst for getting things done. The book follows a couple of different POVs, and I liked them all okay. I didn't feel any particular connection to them, but I enjoyed reading about them. This first book suffered a little bit on pacing. It took a long time to get going, and I had trouble with the villains. For people with so much money and resources, you'd think they'd be a little bit more thorough than they were, and that bothered me a bit. It felt very thin and unplausible, some of the mistakes that were made, some of the things they were trying to do. I just couldn't really buy into it, but I was willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. And it's a really good thing I did because Consuming Fire ended up being one of my favorite books of the year. So overall rating on this, 3.5 out of 5 stars. Ah, oh, Consuming Fire. A highlight of the year for me, for sure. Everything that was built up in the first book kind of came to a head here, and the characters mellowed. They became people that I found just a little bit more relatable, a little more fun to follow. I thought their plots moved along at a really, really smart pace, and there were a whole bunch of cool discoveries. I love the science-y aspect of this book. This is easily one of his most ambitious plot structures to date. And within that, the way he describes flow streams and the theory surrounding that and the way the characters analyze it, I eat that stuff up. I thought it was really cool. So much better characters, fantastic progression of concept, a great sense of discovery, lots of adventure, and a killer momentum towards the end. I think the only thing dinging the rating on this one is that while I enjoyed reading about the characters, I still didn't really feel much of a connection to them, but that's okay. When a book delivers on all the other fronts, I can let some things go. So my overall rating for this one is 4.5 out of 5 stars. Huge jump. The Last Emperor, book 3. I went into this one expecting... Uh, a continuation of the amazing momentum I found in Consuming Fire and was incredibly disappointed. I mean, I still had enthusiasm while I was reading it. I'm like, this is going to get good. I have a feeling. And the first third of the book, nothing but recap. We just sat around recapping everything that happened in the first two books and giving the characters kind of introspection on it and kind of like solidifying their convictions for what's to come. And for a series where the book's came out relatively close together, we did not need that much recap. 
felt like page fillers to me. And it's a good thing this book was short because had it been for like a thick fantasy tome and it took up a first full third of it and it took me days to read, I would have been really upset. As it was, it just took a couple of hours. But then here's the kicker. You get to the middle third of the book and we're done with all the recap. We've talked about everything that's happened in the series so far. And then the author starts reiterating what has happened and what they want to do about it. So the characters just talk a lot with one another and really pound the point home for another third of the book. And there was one pretty good advancing plot point within that, but not enough to sustain the word count. And finally, it got to the point where things picked up a little bit in the end third of the book, but I was sitting there with like 40 pages to go thinking, he, how is he going to bring this home? We have totally killed any momentum that had happened in the third book. And basically at this point, the only way for the ending to land, if it, as it, if it was a good conceptually done ending. And it was fine. It was decent. I didn't mind it. I liked the ending. But do I wish it had come without the slog that preceded it? Definitely. Uh, kind of to the point where I don't think this third book was strictly necessary. I mean... These are fairly small books. He could have easily have taken the one or two good moments in here and plot points and lengthened the second book, kind of rearranged a little bit to get them both a little bit bigger and kind of absorbed the plot points in this book. So for me, this is a prime example of when a series was stretched beyond what it had enough substance to sustain. And had this ending been at the end of the second book with all that amazing momentum building, we might be looking at a different overall rating for the series. As it is for this book alone, just a 2 out of 5 star. It's just so much filler. But for the series as a whole, I think I'm coming in at a solid 3 star. The second book makes the whole thing well worth reading. The third book, the fact that it kind of peters out at the end, is part of the reason why I've got such a conservative overall rating. But yeah, I enjoyed my time with it. They're really quick reads. If you check out the audio, it's narrated by Will Wheaton, and his tone matches the snarky writing style of the books perfectly. But at the same time, his delivery is so full voice forceful that it'll feel like he's yelling at you for the entire series, because he basically is. So if you go the audiobook route, go in with a little bit of caution, but it is a lot of fun. Let's talk about other books you might like. First of all, my favorite Scalzi to date is still the first book in the Old Man's War series. You just, you can't replace John Perry. He's such a good main character and it's such a funny, feel good, but good substance. I love the story. Yeah, check that one out. Another favorite that's very comparable to Scalzi's writing is Planet Side by Michael Mame, but with a lot more substance. This book was so good. I love how smart and introspective the characters were. I love the whole mystery. And this is one of the best momentum building books that I've ever read. It's one of my all-time favorites. Highly recommended if you're a fan of Scalzi's work. All Systems Read by Martha Wells. Scalzi makes me laugh and he's a really light-hearted sci-fi author. And it gives me the same kick that reading a murder bot book does. The difference is is that the profanity in this one was very well placed, emphasized the humorous aspects of the books perfectly for me, and I absolutely loved it. So highly recommend this one as well. Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. If your favorite thing about the interdependency was kind of the overall concept, you liked the conceptual aspect of that sci-fi, but wished some of the plot points had been pushed a little further, prime example of that done well. Not to mention this one has an entire section of biological advancement that I think is just amazing. This one also has the added benefit of sustaining incredible momentum through the whole book and ending with a bang. So very highly recommend this one as well. This one is not funny, which if you're reading a Scalzi, you might be in it for the humor. So take, keep that in mind if you're diving into this one. And then Probably no one's a stranger to hearing about the series, Leviathan Wakes, Part of the Expanse by James S.A. Corey. This one has a great balance of deep character immersion, 
overall concept, good conflicts, overarching plot, and very good momentum building. Basically, this is interdependency on crack. And if you haven't checked it out yet, I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorites. This first book, when it first came out, I think I read it when the third book came out, but it's one of those that kept me up all night because the it was intense and exciting and the momentum just had me kind of careening towards the end of the book wanting to know what happened next. That's kind of how Consuming Fire made me feel, but with this one, it's so much more satisfying. And there you have it. I'd like to take a moment to thank my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting all of my creation. I really appreciate it. And thanks for everyone for watching, and I hope to catch you next time. Bye.